Heart sprinkle. For row 18, we are starting our orange stripe in the background, so we have to change our color here. I'm going to fasten this off and tie a knot. Cut the string. I'm just going to attach the orange to the red. like so. And that was like the very last chain and that last chain from the last double crochet here. We're gonna chain five, double crochet in the third chain from the hook, double crochet in the last two chains. Now I'm going to leave my tails because I like to sew them in to secure them more, but you guys are more than welcome to just crochet over it. For row 18, you need 6 orange, 2 white. Alright guys, so for this row you need 4 light pink. We're going to drop this color but I'm going to leave it attached and I'll show you guys why on the next row. We're just going to take this light pink and bring it over. Okay, and do your four light pink squares. We're also not using this pink but this pink we can bring up. For the remainder of the row 18, you will need six orange. We are not doing this dark pink. We're just gonna carry it over because we're able to bring it over for the next row. So I'm just gonna make sure that the dark pink strand is just up here. And I'm gonna slip stitch the orange into the old yarn. Just make sure that tail for the dark pink is sticking up right there. Now we'll do six orange. I leave this orange tail out. Now we are in row 19 and you're starting with six orange. One dark pink. So this is the dark pink that we brought over from the previous row. Don't make it too loose or too tight. Just kind of lay it out and see how long it needs to be because you don't want to make it so tight for this strand right here that it scrunches up. So just lay it flat or you know whatever works to figure out what the length from here to here and just make your C2C square. So this is how the yarn looks after we brought it over. See this chain from the previous row? Just tighten that. Now you'll need three light pink. So for this part of the row, you need one dark pink, and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to bring this over to where I need it. So if you line it up like this, it's still in its square, and then this part you can crochet over. So what we're going to do is just attach it like normal. Make sure it's behind the light pink here. Yarn over. slip stitch and then continue. So that's how it looks in the back. Two white. Now we're going to have six orange. Two 
For row 20, we need 7 orange. Two white, two dark pink. So this light pink we have to bring over this way. So when I do the second dark pink, I'll crochet over the light pink like this, over the light pink strand. Now we need two light pink, and you're going to bring it over to slip stitch into this chain two space. Don't pull at it too tight because then your blanket will scrunch. So make sure it's laid out flat enough and has enough give so that it doesn't scrunch. So we're going to slip stitch and chain two. And we're going to do one more light pink. So we need seven orange, and we're going to take this light pink and bring it up because we need to use it for the next row. I'm just going to bring it up and leave it like that, and continue with the orange. Now we're on row 21, and you need to start with seven orange. So here we need one dark pink, and I'm just going to bring it over to the back of this orange, like that. Allow it to be a little loose, the dark pink. As you make your blanket throughout each row, make sure, like if I started the next row, make sure you're pulling the tails on these. You don't want that chain to be loose, because then you'll really see the color change. Two light pink, all right, guys. So, for the next section, we need four white. We are not going to use the dark pink on this round, but you do need to carry it over. So, make sure that when you start on this block here, that it's up here for the next round. For the white, we need to bring it over one square. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. Let's make sure the dark pink is up. We're gonna yarn over and slip stitch to join the white or to change over to the white. Now, we need to let the yarn be loose enough so that it can be crocheted on top of here on the next block and on the current block that you're trying to put it at. So let's loosen it up just a little bit. You don't want it too loose. So it kind of like traces those squares or these um, sides right here of this square and it needs to be long enough for here as well. So now we're gonna do our blocks. We need four white. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like. Let me tighten this chain here. This is what it looks like after we brought it from this spot down to here. So if you give it that little bit of give, it looks like you didn't even jump a square. Now we need seven orange. Now we are on row 22 and you need five orange. All right, so now we need one white, one orange, and then three white. Instead of bringing this white over, I'm gonna attach a new white. And that is because we're gonna continue with like a little bit of white on this side and a little bit of orange in between it. So we need one white, 
one orange, three white, all right guys, so I did the three white and here is another tricky spot. You can kind of look at your piece and tell if you can jump that many rows or not. And I'm willing to jump from this part all the way down to here. You need two dark pink, one light pink, one dark pink, and eight orange. All right guys, now we are on row 23 and you're gonna start with seven orange. So we did our seven orange and now we need to do six dark pink. And again, we're gonna bring it down to here. I might have mentioned this earlier about leaving it on and showing you guys how to work the or keep the yarn and still use the same bobbin, but it ended up working out. I think it was for the dark pink, but right now we're going to leave this on and I'll show you guys what I do. Now here we have run into another pink that we're already using, but I think we're gonna drop this pink. We're here on the graph, and the reason why we're dropping the dark pink is because when we continue, it'll be on this side still, and we're just gonna use the dark pink on this side, but I'll show you guys how I do that. So we're dropping a light pink and a dark pink. Now we're gonna do two white. Now we're gonna do two orange. Don't forget to tighten this join right here. One white. And our last section will be five orange. Now we are on row 24 and we are starting with six orange. One white, one orange, two white, one dark pink. So the next set of stitches is five light pink and here we have the light pink that we dropped. However, I'm, I know I'm almost at the end of my bobbin here but I am going to keep using it but I'm going to make the tail really long and slip knot it It's just something that I started doing instead of cutting it now because if you cut it now, you have to sew this up so it doesn't loosen up right here because there's no knot. So instead of stopping and using my darning needle to sew that up, 
then reload here, I am just bringing it over and continuing. Now, yes, it will loosen if you keep tugging at this right here, but at least you can just tighten it and then sew it up later on when you start sewing your ends in, if that makes sense. That's just my method I started doing instead of cutting, sewing, and go back, because it took longer, it seemed like. So I'm gonna save that sewing in for later and just giving myself a long enough tail and using the same bobbin for these next couple rows of light pink. So back to the section, it is going to be five light pink. Now for the last section, it is eight orange. Now we are on row 25 and we're gonna start with three orange. Now we need six dark pink and I think I'm gonna use the bobbin that we dropped over here. And the distance I have to bring it is long enough for my tails to sew it in. If it's way too long, like too way too far, I wouldn't, I would just cut it. But honestly, what I like about it is that it saves me from stopping to sew that in right away. So now we're gonna do six dark pink. I want to keep this tail on the same side. It's gonna look kind of funny at first because I'm trying to keep it on the same side as the other end of the tail here. But once you cut that off, it won't make a difference. Now we're gonna do five light pink. One dark pink. Now we're gonna do one white. One orange. Two white. And the very last section is six orange. Now we're working on row 26 and we're going to start with 6 orange, 4 white, 4 Alright guys, so here I am going to drop this orange. I'm going to leave it on for now and we're also going to drop this white one. So we're just gonna continue with our fourth white square here. One dark pink, 11 light pink, For this part, um, you just need to make sure that the dark pink is up so you can use it for the next row and continue with your light pink. I just finished the 11 light pink. You're gonna need one dark pink and I'm adding a new bobbin to make this because you need it for this side of the heart. For the last set, you just need three orange. All right guys, so the colors we dropped on this row, I think I'm gonna keep them on. You're more than welcome to cut them off and sew them in real quick, but I think we're gonna need it in a couple rows from here, and I think I'm just gonna jump it over or see if I can. It's up to you though, and I just wanna let you know I'm keeping them on. Now we're on row 27, and we're gonna start with four orange. Okay, now we need five light pink. Just make sure that your dark pink is up. 
so you can use it on the next row. Okay, here we need one dark pink. Now we need six light pink and I'm attaching a new light pink bobbin. Now we need four white. Don't forget to bring your dark pink up. On the last section, we need seven orange. Now we're on row 28 and we are starting with seven orange. Four white. One dark pink. Eleven light pink, so here we are meeting up at this dark pink, but this is the dark pink that I was kind of struggling with over here. Um, I would just bring it up the the tail, make sure it's able to come up like this. And now we have two light pinks meeting. I'm going to switch over to this side for this light pink for this heart that's going to be here. Because we're going to continue this dark pink. And at some point, you're going to have one light pink on one side, dark pink, and then another light pink section. So we're switching it over because we're meeting up to it. And we're continuing our 11 light pinks. One dark pink. And on the last section, we have four orange. Now we're on row 29, and we are starting with four orange. One dark pink. Five light pink. one dark pink all right guys so i tried something different i was gonna jump it like i did over here but um i'm sharing this with you guys so you can see how um how many times i've had to do the trial and error to make sure that my colors look neater at the changes here but earlier i had the color like this and it was bothering me that it was showing this light pink right here so what I did before usually is I have the yarn at the top of my hook then I put it in the chain 2 space and then I pull it from back here this is how I normally do it and that's why that big gap of light pink is showing now I tried a different way, same thing or similar, except this time my hook is going to be above the yarn, like that, so the yarn is underneath. And then I'm going to wrap around and pull through like this. That way it stays at the bottom and now it doesn't have that light pink gap or it's not showing as much as it was. Oops. So now we're just going to slip stitch like we normally do to do our color change and pull and then continue with our square. And then when I stick my hook back into this chain two space, I'm going to make sure this time that it's underneath this yarn, that yarn strand like this. Now you see that the color here isn't showing between the where the tail of this 
this square is. Um, it just looks cleaner. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, depending on where you're going or the direction you're jumping the yarn, you kind of just want to see um, which one's the best option to either have the yarn, you know, um, either have the tail of the yarn above the hook, below the hook, just to make sure it lays flat. I hope what I explained here made sense and it was helpful. I kind of got in depth on it there for you. Um, I just wanted to explain like the different ways to <laughs> switch your yarn over. Now we need five light pink. One dark pink, five white. Now we need two orange. All right, guys, so remember the colors we dropped two or three rows back. I am now moving them over to this current row because now we need a white and an orange. So the next block is one white. And then now I'm moving the orange one or reusing it. Like I said, you could have detached it and just um, sewn the ends in and then reattach it again here, but it's really your preference. But for the last section here, we need four orange. Now we're on row 30 and we're starting with five orange. One white, two orange, five white, three dark pink. For this light pink, we need to start it again here. You can either do the method where you keep the bobbin on and start a new tail here, or you can jump the couple, two squares, one, two, to get to here. And I think I'm gonna jump. So here I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you jump squares. And personally, I don't like how it looks. Because see how you can see the, um, the tail yarn that you ran to get to this square. This is the back. And this is the front. It looks fine right here, but you look on the other side and you can see it. So, because I can't stand that, I'm going to go all the way back and then I'm just going to use, I don't know what to call that method that I do where I just run the yarn and start a new tail here. Keep the bobbin on. We're just going to make our two other dark pinks real quick. Now we're gonna continue with the nine light pink. Make sure you bring this dark pink tail up before you do your, the next square. And I am switching over to this other light pink bobbin because these are two separate heart sections and you have this line of dark pink in between them. So to avoid any problems with color changing, later on, we're gonna pick up the other light pink bobbin. So the last section is five orange. Make sure you bring your dark pink tail up. Now we're on row 31 and we're starting with five orange. Now we need one dark pink and we're doing that 
awkward color change here where we bring it to the front, have our hook over or above the yarn, pull it through at the back there, and continue with the block. Make sure you start putting your hook underneath the yarn for the rest of the stitches. Five light pink. All right, guys, we need one dark pink and we're gonna do that awkward yarn change again where we have the yarn at the bottom of our hook, pull through in the back like this. slip stitch, pull the light pink, tighten it like that. Okay, now we're going to chain two. Now we're going to do our three double crochets. Make sure you crochet over this tail, which means we'll be inserting our hook right underneath that dark pink tail like this. Okay. Now we need three light pink. Now we need seven white. Make sure you bring this dark pink up. I am going to move this, I'm gonna jump blocks with this white. The reason why it can work out better now is because of the direction that we are going and the yarn, you are actually able to crochet over it and it'll go with, with the flow of the stitches. So I'll show you guys how it looks when you are able to jump the yarn like this. So I wanted to explain to you guys why we were able to jump blocks this time and not last time. I think it was because the way the tail was running and the direction we were going. So we were trying to jump from here over this way and for some reason the way the yarn tail was looking underneath, um, it wasn't working up the way we'd like it to. And this time as well, we're able to crochet on top of the yarn more and then part of the tail looks like it is part of the stitch itself. So I don't know why it doesn't work out uh, in some directions, but it's really also a judgment call because you can always just do the method here where you just connect and start a new tail. But yeah, if you can, what I like the most is the less ends to sew in the better but this time it worked out so I'm glad I was able to show you that. Now we need three orange. one white, five orange, now we're on row 32 and we're starting with six orange. One white, Two orange, seven white,
one dark pink. Again, we're doing that awkward color change here. Nine light pink. Don't forget to bring up your dark pink and switch over to the other light pink bobbin. One dark pink. And for the last section, it will be five orange. That was gonna be my last stitch and I'm gonna change my little stitch marker project holder here and attach it to the last stitch and it saves the spot. And now I know that this was the last row I worked on. All right guys, so that's the end of week one of the Unicorn C2C Heart Sprinkle Cowl. If you guys like this video, please let me know in the comments down below and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know as well. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and come join us over at our Heart Sprinkle group page. It will be linked down below as well, but it is Heart Sprinkle Cal on Facebook. If you share your work in progress, please use our hashtag Heart Sprinkle Cal and tag me over on Instagram and Facebook because I'd love to see how your blanket is turning out. I will see you guys next week on Monday, and I can't wait to continue this crochet along with you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hey! Man, I hate when I crochet my tail side instead of the actual yarn side. <laughs> I'm saying orange funny. Orange? <laughs> oh, false alarm! Looks like there's a lobster in the clouds. Lobster-shaped cloud.